this video, we're going to be tackling the integer to Roman leak code question. And wow, would you look at this description that leak code has generously given to us. Now, most of this is totally useless, but one thing that is not very useless is this chart right here. This chart is going to be very important because it's going to give us all of the Roman numerals and their corresponding values, and this would be very difficult to memorize. So just realize that they give you the values in the description, and you don't have to memorize that. But what exactly does Leak Code want? Is there any secrets to be concerned about? No, not really. All that Leak Code wants is they want you to take an integer and they want you to turn it into a Roman numeral. And being that this is a Leak Code course, I'm sure you have at least a fundamental understanding of what Roman numerals are. I'm not going to explain that to you, but how exactly do we do this calculation? If you've ever calculated Roman numerals in your head, you've probably used what we're about to do, which is going to be a greedy algorithm. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, in most real life cases, you've probably been tasked with looking at a number like 19 and trying to decipher what would this look like in the form of a Roman numeral. And you don't really try to calculate the whole entire thing. It would be very difficult to just magically come up with the exact Roman numeral. So what you do is you have a greedy algorithm. You do pretty much a greedy algorithm in your head. So you think to yourself, well, what's the largest Roman numeral that I could fit into 19? You can't fit 20. 20 is too large. So the very biggest is going to be X, which is a representation of 10. Then you kind of think to yourself, well, what about what about nine? Now we have to calculate the nine because we have uh, nine left. We've we've already done the ten. We've already done the x. How are we going to do the nine? And if you're familiar with Roman numerals, what you're going to do is you're going to have something that looks like this, and this is the repre representation of a nine. You may be asking yourself, you may be thinking to yourself, well, how are we going to do the IX? That's really complicated. And you would be correct in asking yourself that. And it's super easy. I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's just go ahead. Let's hop over to VS Code and let's start coding it up. So we are inside of Visual Studio Code. And first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead, copy over the actual method from Leak Code. And this is going to uh, return a string and it's called int to Roman. And it takes in an int just like that. I'll leave a link down in the description in case you want to take a look at it yourself. So first things first is remember how I talked about this chart right here is important. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this chart. We're going to go ahead and convert it over into arrays as a data structure to be used within our algorithm. So first thing that I'm going to do is declare an array. You could also use a dictionary, but I tested it out beforehand and it's actually a lot slower because there is more overhead when you use a dictionary. So if you're using a large set of values, a dictionary makes sense, but if we're just going to be using or iterating over a small set of values, uh, an array is actually quicker in this case. So first things first, just go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and type all this out. Probably going to fast forward over it so you guys don't have to sit with me here as I type all this out. So here's where things get a little bit interesting. We have to add what are called these subtractive values. So remember how I was talking about on the whiteboard, what are we going to do with numbers like nine and four? Well, we're just going to add them. And this is actually going to allow us to do those, to do the, what are called subtractive value calculations on the actual uh, Roman numeral. So next thing I'm going to go into here, I'm going to declare a string array. This is where we're going to actually place these symbols. And I'm just going to go ahead and type all this out. And I'll even leave all of the data in the comments so you don't have to type out all of these symbols. Okay, so we are done with the symbols. Like I said, I'll leave them. I'll leave all those symbols down below. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead because we need to return a string and we're going to be operating on a string. We're going to need to go ahead and get out string builder. So let's go ahead and initialize string builder. So we've got our data structures built. Now what we're going to do is 
we're going to build an algorithm that simulates how we convert integers to Roman numerals in our head. What were, we, what were we doing before when we wanted to calculate a Roman numeral in our head? Basically, what we would do is we would try to find the lowest number that would actually fit into, let's say, 19. We'll just use 19 as a very simple example. And what we did is we found the lowest number that would fit into it, and that's going to be 10. And then we subtract 10. That leaves us with 9. And then we do the exact same thing. We find 9. And congratulations. We actually found the Roman numeral that we were looking for. And that's XIX. But let's go ahead. Let's talk about it in a little bit more in depth. What we're going to do is, first things first, we're just going to create a for loop that's going to iterate over all of the values in our data structure that we just created. And when we actually find something that is less than, let's say 19, it is going to number one, subtract from the actual number that we have right here. And then it's going to add this number to a string. And this process of subtracting and then adding the value from the Roman numeral from the data structure that we created is going to be the exact same process that we are going to do inside of our code. So let's go ahead, let's hop into hop inside VS Code and let's finish this algorithm up. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to declare a for loop that's going to iterate simultaneously through our values and symbols. So we're going to say int i is equal to zero and we're also going to iterate over the entire length, but we also want to check to make sure that the num is not less than zero because the num could be less than zero by the time we get to the end of the array and we need to check for that. So next thing that we're going to do is when we find a value that is less than the actual number, so if we go into here, we say values.i, if this is less than the actual number, we want to perform some type of logic. And this is very similar to how we were thinking about things in our head. Let's say if we had 19, we're going to iterate until we get to a number that is less than the actual value that we passed in. So let's say 19. We're going to iterate till we get right here, and this is where we're going to actually perform logic. What is that logic going to be? Well, first things first, as you probably already guessed, we're going to subtract the num from the values that we have inside of the array. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to append the value that we have within our symbols array for the corresponding value that we have in the values array. So if we're going to be appending 10, we're going to be appending x, and we're going to place that within our string. So go into here, go ahead. So we've got our while loop taken care of. Next thing that we need to do is we need to actually return the string that we we used during the string builder. So we're going to go into here and we're going to return the Roman to string. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty elegant algorithm. So let's go ahead, let's toss this inside of the S code and let's see what we get. So let's go here. I'm gonna go ahead, copy and paste this. Going to move this over, make sure that's looking good. Also, looks like I have one too many brackets. So I'm going to go ahead, get rid of one of those brackets, go ahead and run it, see what we get. Test case is accepted. Let's go ahead and submit it, see what our time complexity and space complexity is. Our time complexity is one and our space complexity is one. We are good to go. That is fast as we can possibly ever get. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.